here because health care is under attack. The chant is when health care is under attack, what do we do? Stand up and fight back. When health care is under attack, what do we do? Stand up and fight back. When health care is under attack, what do we do? Stand up and fight back. When health care is under attack, what do we do? Stand up and fight back. That's right. Okay, our next speaker is Anne Marie Talercio. She's the president of the Area Labor Federation, AFL CIO. Anne Marie. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, but my friends gave you all the facts. And the most important fact that you should hear you should remember is that there was a beginning to health care. There was a beginning to Medicare and Medicaid. And we may be witnessing the end. If we don't, stand up and fight back. Because Congress, congressmen like our own CACO, unfortunately I have to say that, shame on CACO, voted for the biggest tax cut, I don't know, in how many years in the world, in the history, because where are they going to get the money from? Where are they going to get it from? They're going to get it from you and me and the people who are actually worse than you and me. They're going to get it from the people who are the weakest, who for whatever reason, don't have access to affordable health care because they're either out of work and sick, they can't work, or they are low income, or they're children without parents, or they're veterans. Once again, our veterans, we could always leave them behind, can't we? Yeah. They never worry except when it's in front of a camera and it's an election day story. So here we are again. Happy birthday to Medicare and Medicaid. And we have to take that back and circulate it. Because I think a lot of young people don't know that. A lot of old people don't know that. And that's what the people who are voting for this tax cut are counting on. They're figuring you're not going to do 1 plus 1 or 1 minus 1 is 0. They really think they can have a tax cut and not, and not pay for it with our money. So please, get out there and fight to support the continuation and even the better Medicare and Medicaid for all. Thank you. These are real people. These are real people that are going to be affected by these cuts. Cuts of in the Trump plan, over $500 billion over 10 years, and $763 billion in Medicaid. Medicare, $563. Medicaid, five, excuse me, one point, no, $763 billion. If you look at the congressional budget plan, it's something like $537 billion in cuts to Medicare and $1.5 trillion in cuts to Medicaid. And that's to pay for the tax cut. 83% went to the top 1%. And in New York State, we have 96,400 people who are in the top 1%. And those people are going to get a tax cut of about $30,000 a piece. All right, let's do this. Chant, just stop the cuts. One, two, three. Stop the cuts. Stop the cuts. Stop the cuts. Stop the cuts. All right, thank you very much. One more thing I want to mention before we get to our next speaker. One more thing I want to mention is that our congressman voted for this bill, this tax cut bill. And this tax cut bill is going to cut Medicare and Medicaid for 8 million New Yorkers. Shame. This was the wrong shame. thing to do. Shame, shame, shame. Our next speaker is Dr. Bonnie Grossman, member of the Physicians National Health Program for over 20 years. She's board certified in emergency medicine. She's practiced 29 years as a director of emergency department at Oneida Healthcare and from 2011 to 2017. Then she served as Associate Chief Medical Officer at Upstate University Hospital. Bonnie? Woo! Right there. there you go. Hi, everyone. Welcome. What a nice day for a party, huh? Um, I'm here because um, I've spent my career um, in healthcare and I've been on the front line, so to speak, in the emergency department, and I am very aware of um, what it means when people don't have access to health care. Uh, they end up on our beds, and sometimes in very bad shape. And um, I think that there's no one here that doesn't have loved ones or friends who have, who have not benefited from 
from Medicare or Medicaid. Everyone knows people. So I think that what our leaders are missing is that it's the human decency and compassion um, that drives us to take care of one another. And that means every one of us. And we deserve not only basic health care, but even more importantly, we need preventive health care so that we can so that we can um, avoid the many medical problems that we see, and when we do see them, treat them as soon as possible. And that's one of the things that Healthcare for All would help us achieve, because we would take care of people from the beginning to the end. Um, and, and, that's, and that's our first opportunity to controlling our healthcare costs, and that's another thing our leaders are not really understanding, I think. Medicare and Medicaid have an overhead of about two to three percent um, to deliver health care that they already do. Whereas the private for profit insurers, their administrative costs are more like 10, 15 percent, even higher. And that's before we count in their profits. So the reality is our federal government, our country, already has a single payer program partially deployed. What we need to do is harness it improve it, restructure it, and then take care of the health care of all of us. We need to take the profit motive out of our health care, especially when it comes to essential prescription medications and treatments. For profit, for profit private payers and big pharma, they will only take us down a road of less access, more out-of-pocket expenses, more personal bankruptcies, and poor quality of health to boot. The outcomes are not getting better, they're getting worse. Our health care coverage should not be linked to our employers. This burden is breaking the backs of our businesses. We need to tell our government leaders, don't distract us with new tax cuts, fix health care. And it's not just the liberals, and it's not just the Democrats that believe in this. And I just want to give you a couple of quotes from a couple of very respected, very wealthy businessmen. One is Charlie Munger, who's the vice chairman of Berkshire Hathaway. He said, quote unquote, single payer system is really the answer. And his partner, Warren Buffett, called rising health care costs, quote, a tapeworm eating away at American business. Munger went on to say, quote, the politicians on each side don't want to figure this out. They just hate each other and scream at each other, so it's a disgusting outcome. I agree, and we need to keep acting with our voices and our votes until we get leaders in charge with the guts and the moral resolve to face this crisis. Happy birthday to Medicare and Medicaid. I'm in the Physicians for a National Health Program. Um, I've, been in the, I've been in this group since I came out of medical school and started my career almost 40 years ago. And our chant is really simple. It's everyone in, nobody out. Everyone in, nobody out. Everyone in, nobody out. Everyone in, nobody out. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Grossman. I really appreciate your comments because you have made it a personal issue. These are patients you have seen and you know that the system could be better and you know how to do it. Our next speaker is Eskar Zelikov, Syracuse Peace Council. He's going to be talking about health care, not work. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for having me. Uh, if everyone who doesn't know me, my name is Oscar Salakov, and I intern for the Syracuse Peace Council, and I'm here to talk on their behalf. And uh, as many of you already know, our grassroots organization has been around for a very long time. And for as long as we have existed, we've always fought for peace and social justice around the world. And today, we would like to acknowledge a couple of key interconnected issues that have been uh, happening here in America. You already know that the GOP uh, tax reforms are threatening to cut funding to Medicaid and Medicare the Affordable Care Act. Additionally, the Trump administration and Congress have been thinking about, for a very long time now, defunding the Department of Health and Human Services in order to, in order to limit our uh, national deficit. And on top of all this, at the same time, this year, 
our government has approved the uh, omnibus spending bill that is appropriating an additional $61 billion for military spending, which allows the Department of Defense to deploy more troops abroad, to purchase weapons from Boeing and the Lockheed Martin, to orchestrate drone strikes abroad in places like Pakistan, Syria, and Iraq, and also to support our allies in their endeavor to violate human rights in places like Palestine and Yemen. So we have to ask ourselves, why is it that millions of Americans are in danger of losing health care and of facing higher premium rates and uh, facing higher deductible costs, while at the same time, we are also spending more and more money on fighting wars and exacerbating humanitarian crises that we had never asked for in the first place. So this is why the Syracuse Peace Council wants to ask all of you, to demand from your politicians, to to repeal uh, the HUP uh, tax cuts, to defend Medicaid and Medicare, to promote health care for all, and to, to ask Congress to stop siphoning money from social programs that are actually keeping us safe, to fund military adventures abroad. More importantly, I want to ask everyone here, regardless of what happens in the 2018 election, regardless of what happens in 2020, I want you all to not become complacent. If Donald Trump if he gets thrown out of office in 2020, we can't just raise our hands up, celebrate, and go home. We can't do that. Increased military spending is increased military spending in conjunction with um, defunding of uh, health care is not a Trump issue. It is an issue with our government. It is way beyond him, and it includes lawmakers that have fallen prey to pharmaceutical companies and to uh, health insurance companies. So I ask you all to not only organize beyond 2020, but to agitate beyond 2020. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ashkar. I really appreciate it. And now we're going to have Mary House, a Syracuse activist with the Green Party. She's going to share with us her condition and what she has to deal with. She's right now a cutting cake for everyone who's stopping by. And we've got an enormous crowd here. And we really appreciate you coming to celebrate Medicare Medicaid birthday. And Mary, you're up. Hi, sorry everyone, I'm covered in cake frosting. <laughs> um, so thank you all for coming out to celebrate Medicare and Medicaid's birthday today. Um, and we have an access here in the area. And um, I have a pre-existing condition. It's type 4 allergy and loss. Um, there's 13 types of allergy and loss. Um, mine is um, one of the fatal ones. There is no cure for Ehlers-Danlos. Um, there's only preventative care, and I'm sadly without health care. Some of the issues that come with having type 4 Ehlers-Danlos are chronic pain, fatigue, and a plethora of other issues. Um, with type 4, I also um, have a life expectancy of about 50. Um, I can end up having my aortic valve fail um, or one of my organs failing. Um, the best way to help with help having the longest quality of life with Ehlers-Danlos, no matter what type you have, is preventative care. I sadly am without health insurance now, so I'm not able to see the specialist that I usually go to. Um, so this does bring up issues with any new like pains or other issues that I have before that come up. I don't know what it's from, and I don't know how to treat it because I don't have the money to go to the doctor. Um, I'm hoping that universal health care does get passed in New York State and all around the country because people deserve, no matter if they have a pre-existing condition or not, to have a good quality of life throughout the country and in our state. And with universal health care, people will be able to do that. Um, thanks for coming out again and listening to my story. And I hope you guys all have a great day. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mary, for sharing the very personal information and your crisis that you face as a result of um, a disease that needs preventive care and maintenance care and that you're not getting it right now. Really appreciate your sharing that. So I want to ask you, do we want to stop the cuts? Stop, stop the cuts! 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 And now I'm going to ask uh, 
I think uh, Howie Hawkins is here. He might want to say a few words, and we hit, we have some other people who would like to share their personal messages. Howie. Well, I'm newly on the Medicare. I retired uh, technically on March 1st. I got Medicare A, and then this month I got my first Medicare B bill for $134. Medicare is good as far as it goes, but it doesn't cover everything. Right. I need vision, dental, and I got a foot problem. They, they got to cut off this hard callus. Worked on my feet all my life and got some problems there. Medicare don't cover. That's 80 bucks a shot. And we got to, I got, I'm a member of a group called uh, Labor Campaign for Single Payer Health Care. Because we want Medicare for all that covers all medically necessary services. And I was actually arrested across the street about seven years ago when we were debating whether to go Medicare for all or Obamacare, which is handing over state subsidies for private insurance, because WellPoint, which had a contract for managed care for Medicare patients, wasn't paying when people, you know, doctors, providers ask for payment for services. And we had a letter for them. They wouldn't take it. I went in the door. The police arrested me for trespassing. And so we have a system right now. The message from the labor campaign for single payer health care this morning from Mark Dudzik, our national coordinator, was to think of pie. I know we got cake here, I prefer pie, but pie meant protect, improve, and expand Medicare. Protect it. It's under attack. Not only have they let these private insurance companies in to take out money for not providing good service, but they're setting it up to turn it into a voucher system because they say the debt's too high. We're well, setting us up. We just passed a military budget of $716 billion, $70 billion more than Trump and the Pentagon asked for, and it was bipartisan. I know a lot of you are Democrats. 60% of your delegation in Congress voted for that budget. We're being set up. So we got to protect what we got. We got to improve what we got. It doesn't cover drugs except through these uh, drug plans, which is private insurance, and they don't let Medicare bargain with the drug companies to bring down the health care costs, which every other country does. That's a corporate welfare for big pharma, and that's why we got to improve Medicare. And then we got to expand it. We got to cover people like Mary House, who can't get insurance yeah. in the private right. sector. Yes. And we need Medicare for all. That's improved and expanded. I'm the Green Party candidate for governor of New York. And when the primaries sort things out, I'll likely be the only candidate on the ballot saying we got to pack you pass the New York Health Act, which is improved Medicare for all in New York State. And that's what we got to focus on. Because otherwise, all of us are going to have problems covering our health care needs. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Howie. And what do we want? Medicare for all. What do we want? Medicare for all. What do we want? Medicare for all. Once again, I'll ask if there are any other speakers who would like to uh, share something. I will. Katie? Okay, I have two short stories. Um, one is about Medicare, one is about Medicaid. Medicare, uh, my husband's on Medicare. And last year, oh, actually, last year he paid $6,700 out of pocket for his drug because he's a diabetic. So Medicare definitely does not cover him well enough. But we're not going to choose between food and medicine like a lot of people makes you really sad when you think about it. So we have that choice. Um, a lot of people don't. My other story is about Medicaid. Um, about 25 years ago, my mother went to the emergency room and she had a, was diagnosed with a brain tumor. And because she had no health care, Medicaid stepped in and basically saved her life. She got the best neurosurgeon in Syracuse just by walking into Krause Hospital emergency room and he was like on a rotation and he got my mom and he never ever like turned her down. She had three brain tumors removed and he cared for her until the end. So uh, I just want to say that Medicaid will step in 
at times when people don't realize it. They saved my mother, and they save a lot of people. So I'm a big fan of Etiquette. <laughs> Thank you. Katie Barrett, she did a great job. She's telling the truth about what happens under our health care, under our present health care system. <laughs> One announcement from this gentleman. I'm uh, Mary Gordon, and I'm a member of Beyond War and Militarism, and one of the supporting organizations of Tomorrow's Action against the atrocious behavior of ICE. There was a demonstration on the 1st of July that was very large and very vigorous. And there's another one tomorrow noon at the Federal Building. Tomorrow I'm going to have flyers if anybody wants them. Thank you very much, Mary. And I just Thank want to you. summarize what we have here. This is the 53rd anniversary of Medicare and Medicaid. The tax cut that was recently passed in December, once again, has endangered these vital programs for our people. 120 million people are on these programs. Eight and a half million New Yorkers face threats to their coverage because of this program. And remember, when Donald Trump was a candidate, he promised to be unlike any of the other Republicans and never cut Social Security or Medicare and Medicaid. But now, under his proposal, he's proposing to cut 1.3 trillion in cuts to Medicare and Medicaid, according to the ARA report. House Republicans on their own proposing $2 trillion in cuts to Medicare and Medicaid. And under one of these cuts, you'll actually have to be 67 before you collect. So as Howie was pointing out that he's 65 and he's collecting, no, you're going to have to go two more years to collect. And it, was cause, it will cause millions to lose their health insurance. It will jack up premiums and out-of-pocket costs. Remember, 96,000 of the wealthiest New Yorkers get a tax cut of $30,000, and they're earning about $3 million each. At the same time, to qualify for Medicaid, a family of three needs about $28,000. And the average, or the median, excuse me, the median salary or income of anybody on Medicare is $26,000 a year. So Trump and the GOP want to repeal the ACA. That's another problem because that affects so many New Yorkers and they're going to be denied coverage. And remember what this does, this tax law does for the drug companies. It allows them to pad their profits. It allows them to take $76 billion from offshore money and bring it to this country tax-free. And did you see any reductions in your prescription drugs? No. You didn't see any reductions in prescription drugs, no. This is what the Trump tax plan is doing to Medicare, Medicaid, and it's touching Social Security too. So I ask you, please, go to your congressman, Congressman Cacho, who voted for this plan, and ask him to reform this plan, to change this plan. He voted for it, he shouldn't have done it. It hurts all of us in Central New York. Thank you very much for coming and celebrating this great birthday celebration for Medicare and Medicaid. All right, one last chance. Healthcare is a human right. Healthcare is a human right. We will speak out and fight. We will speak out and fight. Healthcare is a human right. We will speak out and fight. Healthcare is a human right. We will speak out and fight. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Go to the stage. Get some cake.